All right, welcome to another video. And this time we're going to be looking at the differences or comparing mixed numbers and improper fractions. We're going to, it's like comparing, you know, which which is larger, one or two. We know that, but we're going to do it with fractions this time. Um, so here's a little story here. Jordan watched a TV program for one and a half hours. Jesse watched five half hour programs. Who watched TV for a longer time? So there's a few strategies we're going to look at in how you can look uh, and compare mixed numbers and improper fractions. And we're going to look at how to compare two and a quarter, two thirds, and eleven six. And I'm going to rewrite that so it's a little bit clearer. Two and one quarter, two thirds, and eleven six. Now, strategy number one, we can use benchmarks and estimation, and we could say, well, two thirds. Is, is larger than one half. You can imagine, you know, if I drew, here's my third color in two. Well, that's definitely larger than half because half would have been here, right? So two thirds is, is larger than half. It's between a half, but it's not quite one. It's closer to the half, okay? 11 six is the same as saying one in five six. The last lesson we learned how to convert that, okay? So one in five six. That's pretty close to, to two because this five six is almost a whole, right? So that would make that almost two, but it's less than two. And two and a quarter. Well, a quarter is half, is half of a half. So two quarters, it's halfway between two and two and a half. So I drew a little number line here with some benchmarks. And the benchmarks are things we know to be true. And we can always put, well, if there's a half, a one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. And the whole numbers are probably better better benchmarks here. So knowing where the three is, where the two is, and where the one is. Now we said two thirds is between a half and one, but it's closer to a half. So we're gonna estimate, just putting it right there. And we said that one and five, six, or 11, six is almost two. So we stick it right there. And two and a quarter is halfway between two right here and two and a half right here. So that's where we put it. Okay, so using benchmarks um, and estimation to place it. Another one is we can draw uh, lines that are that are equal length, okay? But we're gonna divide them into different amount of pieces that work with the denominator. So if I'm dealing with two and a quarter, our denominator is four. So I'm gonna make sure that there's four pieces, so one, two, three, four here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna redraw that. Probably a good idea to start with what's halfway. That's about halfway, and then half and a half, okay? And then halfway, half, half. So there's one, two, three, four pieces. Uh, halfway, half, and a half. Now two and a quarter, there's my two. Uh, this will be halfway right here, so that means this is my two and a quarter spot. Okay, uh, two thirds, the number is uh, three, so we're gonna divide into three equal parts, say like that. And two thirds is not quite a whole, so there's one third here, this means this is two thirds right here. So maybe I should label these. And that's two and a quarter. And the last one we have six. Now, I'm going to have to divide this into six equal pieces. That's going to be a little bit harder. So there's half, one, two, three, four, five, and this will be the six. Okay. So there's halfway, divide these into thirds. Okay. And halfway. So this is approximate. Okay. Now it's 11, six. We said before that 11, six is one and five, six. Okay, and if you don't remember what, how to do that, you need to go back to the previous video. So here's one, and we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six. So one and five, six, or 11, six was our original fraction. So which one's larger? It looks like two and a quarter. Two and a quarter, and if we're, because we're looking at, they're all equal lengths. So two and a quarter is first, followed by one and five, six, followed by two thirds. The last way, and this is Mr. Hardy recommends method, is you can write equivalent fractions with the same denominator. If you notice, uh, two and a quarter, denominator is four. Two thirds, denominator is three. 11, six, 
denominator is six. We got to think in our heads, what is, what, what can those denominators be changed into to make them all the same? Okay, because we can compare things that are the same. Um, one thing we should do before we move on is we always write any mixed numbers into improper fractions. And two and a quarter, remember from the last lesson, two times four is eight plus one is nine. Keep the same denominator. So nine quarters is that one. Okay, so I'm going to list these here. We have nine quarters. I have two thirds and 11 sixths. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply each of these denominators that, um, that make them the same. So what do the, does a four, three, and a six, what um, common multiples we have in, in common? We, we haven't done multiples in a while. I can make them all into twelfths, okay? If I make them all into twelfths, that will help me. Now, so maybe I'll put a twelve, twelve, and a twelve. Okay, well, for, to get four to a twelve, we need to multiply it by three. And here's a rule about fractions. Whatever you do to the denominator, you must do to the numerator. So if I do times three, the four, uh, the denominator of four, I must do it to the numerator of nine. So that would be 27. I know it's a little messy there. 27 twelfths. If I want to get this three to a 12, I'm going to have to multiply by four. I have to do the same thing to the numerator. That becomes eight twelfths. And then lastly, to get the 6 to a 12, it's multiplied by 2. I have to do the same thing to the numerator, 22 twelfths. Now, they all have the same denominator. We can compare them. Which one's the largest? This one here, 27 twelfths. So if I was to list them from greatest to least, I'm going to go with the original fraction, 2 and a quarter. Next one up is 11 6, followed by 2 thirds. Okay. I'm gonna get you to try this one. I want you to compare nine tenths. I'll rewrite that. Nine tenths, seven fifths, and eleven quarters. Don't have any mixed numbers here, but I want you to compare these three fractions and to see which one is the largest. You could use the number line method. You could use the benchmarks, or uh, I, I'm gonna show you how to do the equivalent fraction method. So take a take a couple of minutes and try and figure out which one is the smallest and we're going to go to greatest. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to make them have a common denominator. Okay, so what is a 4, a 5, and a 10? What can we multiply to get them um, the same? Well, I know that 4 times 5 here equals 20. Can I make a 10 a 20? Yes. Okay, so we're going to go with 20s. Write these out. Okay, so to get this 10 to a 20, I need to multiply by two. I have to do the same thing to the numerator. Multiply by two, nine times two is 18 20ths. To get this five to a 20, I need to multiply by four. I have to do the same thing to the numerator, the seven, that is seven times four is 28. And then lastly, to get this four to a 20, I have to multiply by five. Do the same to the top, I get 55. Now, I asked you to go from least to greatest. What is the least? Huh, they're actually in the proper order anyway. So 18 20ths followed by 28 20ths, 55 20ths. But the proper way to do this now is to the original fraction. So the least is 9 tenths followed by 7 fifths followed by 11 quarters. All right, there you go, that's it. And remember, in life, math happens. Take care.